In this lecture, we're going to briefly discuss a group in organic chemistry known as the allele group. So basically, allele compounds usually end up stabilizing intermediates in different types of reactions and they also stabilize the transition states and as a result, allyl compounds as compared to their alkyl counterparts end up increasing the rate of reaction. So let's begin by discussing what the allyl cation is and what the allyl anion is. So an allyl cation is basically a molecule that contains three carbons as shown. So this carbon has one H group, this carbon has two H groups, and this carbon has two H groups as well. So basically we have a positive charge on this carbon and what ends up taking place is these, these two electrons in the pi bond basically jumping forth between these two bonds. So we have a bond formed here and then a bond formed here. And the actual molecule is an intermediate between these two resonance structures. So basically the positive charge jumps back and forth and this system is a more stable system than the alkyl counterpart in which we do not have resonance stabilization. Now if we are to examine the orbital diagram for the allyl cation that will describe the structure of the molecule even better and that is shown in this diagram. So each one of these two carbons basically contains our p orbital and our electron, the two electrons here, basically are found throughout this entire region. So we have a spreading out of the electron density among these three orbitals and basically we have a delocalization of not only the charge, the positive charge, but also of these two electrons. Now, let's move on to a similar compound known as the allyl anion. So basically, this is almost the same thing except on this 2p orbital. So we do not have a positive charge, but we have two electrons, so we have a negative charge. Now, in a very similar way, we have two resonance structures formed. So basically, these lone pair of electron on the first carbon basically bond with this carbon here forming a double bond displacing these electrons which end up on this last third carbon here. So basically, in the same way that the positive charge jump back and forth, the negative charge and the two electrons also jump back and forth. Now if we examine our orbital diagram we get a similar picture except here instead of the positive charge being delocalized we have the negative charge being delocalized. It is spread out evenly among these three orbitals and the actual structure of the allyl anion is a structure that looks something like this. Inter it, it's an intermediate between these two structures. So now that we discuss the structure of the allyl cation and the allyl anion, let's discuss two important types of reactions that involve allyl molecules, so specifically allyl halides. So let's examine the SN1 reaction with allyl halides and the SN2 reaction with allyl halides. So basically, let's suppose we have the following reacting. We have our three carbon allyl group and we have some type of halide, for example, iodide, that is attached to our uh, first carbon. So let's label this unknown halide as simply X. So basically, in the first step, 
of our SN1 reaction, this H, this X group acts as a leaving group and it displaces, it leaves. So basically this lone pair of electrons leaves creating the following allyl cation intermediate that is stabilized by resonance. So because this is stabilized, we see that the energy level of this intermediate will decrease as compared to the alkane counterpart, the alkyl counterpart. And not only does our intermediate stabilize, our transition state, that transition state between this and this and this and this is also stabilized. It lowers in energy and because the transition state lowers in energy, the rate of this SN1 reaction also increases compared to the alkyl counterpart. Remember the alkyl molecule is basically the molecule that looks like this except there is no pi bond. So we simply have single bonds and so we do not have any resonance stabilization taking place. Now in the second and third step, in the second step we have a water molecule that basically attacks this open carbocation and in the third step we basically have deprotonation of that water molecule to form our alcohol. So this reaction takes place at a much faster rate than compared to the molecule if we began with simply a sigma bond here and no pi bond, the alkyl halide. So allyl halides have greater rates for SN1 reactions than compared to their alkyl halide counterpart. Now let's examine the SN2 reaction with allyl halide. So once again we begin with the same exact reactant except now instead of just having this leave we have a nucleophile that basically comes from behind and attacks this carbon in the, in the same process displacing this X that uh, acts as our leaving group. So we have a one-step mechanism versus a two-step mechanism. Actually, in this case, a three-step mechanism because we have the deprotonation step taking place. Now, this is the diagram that describes our transition state. And what actually happens because we have this pi bond here on the alkyl group, this pi bond has a pair of electrons that basically acts to delocalize along these three uh, p orbitals, this three two p orbitals of these three carbon molecules and that stabilizes this transition state, lowers its energy, thereby lowering or decreasing the activation energy and that speeds up the rate of our SN2 reaction. So once again, the rate of the SN2 reaction is also increased for allyl halides as compared to their alkyl halide counterpart. This is because the transition state as shown here is stabilized by the delocalization of electrons. Now this delocalization of the electron density among these three carbons basically leads to a more stable transition state and this decreases the activation energy. So we can actually draw the orbital diagram for what is taking place within the transition state and that is shown here. So basically in the transition state we see that these three 2p orbitals of the three carbons basically align themselves parallel with respect to one another. And the two electrons that are found between these two orbitals end up being delocalized among these three orbitals. And this sharing of electrons basically delocalizes or spreads out the electron density among all three orbitals and we know 
from quantum mechanics. When the electron density is allowed to occupy a greater region, a greater volume, that stabilizes our system and that decreases its energy. So if we look at the following energy diagram where the y-axis is our energy and the x-axis is the reaction progress of the essence reaction, we see that the activation energy for our essence reaction with the allyl halide shown by the dashed black line is smaller than that for the solid line where the solid line designates the reaction the essence reaction with an alkyl halide basically a molecule that does not have this pi bond so as a result of the stabilization of the transition state, the activation energy is lowered and so the rate of our reaction basically increases.